everyone, this is Marwa Abdelgrill welcoming you on our Relo Mentors platform. You are kindly required to switch off all your cameras and mics to reduce the background noise. Thank you for joining us in this Zoom meeting entitled More Learner Engagement with Digital Tools presented by Mr. Mohammed Al Muhammadi, the Assessment Coordinator at the Saudi Petroleum Services Polytechnic KSA. He is also an Assistant Cell Tutor and Cell Trainer. He has been teaching and training for 18 years now. He has also served as an EFL instructor, academic coordinator, and learner counselor in different institutions. Hello, Mr. Muhammad. How are you? By the end, of course, I'm going to provide you with a gift, which is um, a list of more suggested uh, digital tools that you can pick something uh, useful to apply in your classes as well. And are you ready for some fun? I want to see your, uh, your interaction. And through the chat box because we're going to use it a lot. So are you ready? I like that. Good. So after a while, I'm going to share this link in the chat box. All what you need just to click on it or to copy and paste it in your browser. You will find yourself here. And you have a task to finish. You have to read this question. And then you, in, on the bottom uh, right corner, you are going to have a plus icon. You click it. Once you click it, it generates a text box for you in which you are going to tap and write your answer in. Once you finish, post it or tap any empty space on the screen. And while you're doing this, I want you to monitor what will happen on the screen in front of you. Clear? So here we go. Someone in the chat box is writing again, please. Again? Yes, please. This link, I'm going to copy and paste it in the chat box. I want you to copy and paste it. Once you click or use it, you're going to find yourself on a page like this. You have a task. What digital tool do you usually use in your class? And what do you use it for? To answer this question, go to the bottom right corner. As you can see here, you can find here a plus icon. Click it. Once you click it, it generates a text box for you. Type your answer in it. Is it okay now? Yes, they are waiting for the link. Perfect. So we have to be sure that everyone is, uh, is fine now. <laughs> it's okay. So the chat box. Here's the link. Yes. While you are typing your answer, I want you to monitor what will happen in front of you on the screen, please. <laughs> wow, Earth Meadow, Quizlet. I use WhatsApp, really good. Great. Quizies. Teams for collaboration and synchronizing. Wow. I have an expert here who's using a lot of digital tools here, Google Forums, Quizzes, Kahoot, Word, Wall, and Kahoot as well. That's great. Zoom, WhatsApp. WhatsApp, OK, digital tools and communication, WhatsApp. Excellent. Great, yes. 
I want you, as you are doing this, I want you to monitor your production, all of you. We have now, how many ones do we have now? We have about 52 participants now are sharing their ideas at the same time. I use the video, wow. We have another one who uploaded a video here or a picture. Good. That's great, I think this is a good start. And as you can see here, this is your input and most of us are using some various uh, and digital tools that most of us are familiar with. But I want you to keep in mind something like this. Can you see this picture here? This is a picture, so we can upload pictures as well or videos or uh, PDFs or PowerPoint. So I can, it's not just text play or a place to share text. It's about also sharing many different kinds of resources. Okay, that's fine. Let's move on. So, share again this. Thank you very much, that's great. In the chat box now, I want you to, we're going to talk about Padlet. What do you think of such an activity like this, if we're going to apply it in our class? What do you think of it? Do you like it or not, and why? Sharing ideas, someone says, great tool, yes. Engaging, good. Okay, so why do you think it's good? And if someone, disagree with, if someone disagrees with us, uh, I'd like to hear from him as well. Yes, I like it's a dynamic, dynamic. So this is number one, engaging. Number two, interactive. Have students to involve effectively in the pure teaching you can. It's so much fun for kids, that's right, to express their own ideas freely. Flexible. Great, great, great. I like your input. You are really so encouraging to complete. <laughs> Good. Did you find it difficult to use? Was it difficult? Okay, that's great. Thank you. So let's move on. Now, this will lead us to the following question. This is a big challenge now to you. How can I use it in my classes? How can it be used in our classrooms? I want you to think about some ideas. How can I apply such a tool like this? And to give me an example of how to use it. Also in the chat box, please. In the chat box, you can type in the chat box as well, yes. In ideas, for example, you say, you mentioned something about brainstorming ideas. That's right, yes. In writing, we can brainstorm ideas. So it's in writing lessons, great. Okay, brainstorming ideas. So it's all about interactive activities. Close, okay, correction, perfect. Peer correction, maybe. In reading and speaking lessons, I agree. Flipped classroom, that's right. Yeah, because it's one of the interactive tools. Okay. Yes, I know that Zoom. <laughs> Work in pairs or groups. Formative assessment. I like this terminology, formative assessment. Any kind of exercise that we, check, we, we, we assign to our students uh, during the, the, the listen, it's a kind of formative assessment, that's right. Any collaboration work, that's great, good. I think you shared a very good input here. So let me also share what I have with you here. As you mentioned, you mentioned many things, by the way, uh, which are very useful. And re remember also that we are talking about how to engage our learners in a new way, in a different way than just using pictures or questions, um, something that involve them from the very beginning. And when they are involved with, they are, they are going to be engaged in doing something, especially when they are playing with their phones or iPads. So I can say that it's a very good uh, tool for brainstorming ideas, like what I did now with you, to brainstorm some ideas about the digital tools that you are using, your classes. Also for whole class feedback in no time, because uh, I want everyone to participate 
And at the same time, in order not to ask everyone individually or ask them to work in groups, I'm going to make the whole class participate at the same time in a few seconds or a few minutes. And then I get their feedback. It will be displayed in front of them. And they will like it because they are, they are the ones who are uh, responsible for creating it and uh, also for uh, it, it, it ensures that, that it's uh, anonymous. Nobody knows whose answer is this. So if he make, uh, makes some mistakes or something, he will be safe or feel secure that nobody's going to uh, laugh at him or something like that. Writing lessons. Great idea, and you mentioned this as well. Because I can, before I start, I'm going to show you now, after a while, a sample of um, a task that I sent to my students in my class before a writing task, especially when I'm dealing with uh, uh, elementary stage or true beginners who do not know so much or do not, do not have much to uh, start a writing task or a paragraph. And they are struggling with this and they are get bored, very bored quickly from in a writing lesson. So I use it also to encourage them, to engage them in the uh, writing lesson and to give them a step uh, to help them or some uh, input that helps them to start their writing task. Error correction that you mentioned, checking understanding in an engaging and interesting way as well by, by for example, displaying a picture or a question, ask them to respond to it. Triggering various activities. You know, uh, jigsaw reading when you assign um, uh, a par some paragraphs to, to different groups and you have, for example, five paragraphs and you assign um, a paragraph to a separate group with some different set, uh, sets of questions and each group is going to answer it on their own and then they are going to share it. I can make this online by asking the groups to work or uh, some, some groups of the students to work in groups and to display their answers simultaneously on uh, the board and, for example, uh, ask them to uh, the one who's going to finish first is going to be the winner. So they're going to monitor their progress on the board and work harder to finish it in an interesting way as well. Presentation. Do you have an idea about how can I use this in presentation? Shai can find himself that's right, yeah. How can I use Padlet to ask my students to create interesting uh, presentations? Is it possible to use it to make presentations? Can you write your answer in the chat box? Sure, different pages. Okay, what makes a presentation more engaging? I don't think so. So Bilal mentioned that he doesn't think so. Okay, let's see Bilal. Animate, audio, visual aids. Okay, let's using keywords. Okay, please, yes, that's right. So one of the main features of uh, Padlet is the ability to upload videos, images, links to websites, uploading recordings, PDFs, PowerPoints, any type, of, uh, fi any type of file that we use. So you can upload, you can ask, for example, your students to, to talk about their, or to make a project or a presentation about their hometown or their hobbies, for example. And ask them to provide any kind of uh, aid that help them to express this in a nice way upload any videos, they can upload videos uh, about themselves that they, they record the, for uh, uh, some situations or themselves or record some voice messages and prepare some images and upload all of this on a Padlet and then they share it with their uh, colleagues and present it to them. So this is one of the, we're going to see something like this after a while and to see how to upload such videos or images or whatever any final, okay? In the same way, I can use it for my lesson planning. If I say uh, I'm going to make my presentation or uh, my presentation, a video, a link, an image, or all, all the images that I'm going to use for this uh, lesson in one place and display it one by one to my students. And I can share it with them later as I uh, share the link with you now. So if they can access it later at home and re revisit it to uh, 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 revise it or uh, check the new points or to make it as a resource for them. So it can be also a good uh, way to, of creating an interactive and interesting listening plan as well. Let me show you now some samples, real samples that I use myself with my students. 
This is one of uh, the activities that I assigned to my students. It was before a speaking task. I asked them, what do you usually do at the weekend? And remember that I'm dealing with elementary stage. We're supposed to talk from one to two minutes about their weekend. And half of them cannot do this without help. So they can just produce one or two sentences and stop. And because I know this, I thought about using Padlet to generate more ideas and to ask them to collaborate together and to display their answers on a Padlet and give them some time to prepare, prepare their uh, speaking activity before, before they start, uh, start presenting it uh, in front of the class. And this was their input. Another task was uh, before a writing activity. And again, it was about last of the day. I asked them to write any ideas, verbs, nouns, or adjectives that they may use while they are writing about their last holiday. And again, as you can see here, they mentioned a lot of things. Oh, by the way, I'm dealing with Saudi learners, so you're going to find a lot of Bahrain and Abha, and these are cities and countries uh, in Saudi Arabia and countries around it. And as you can see also, we have some input which is not correct, and it's a good chance also to um, open a discussion with them in order to correct themselves. So what do you think, for example, for this, is this right or not? And again, nobody knows whose answer is. So it will be an interesting to discuss things and to correct it. And by the way, throw these three dots as an administrator, you can click it and it change uh, any kind of correction and get, or delete something which is uh, not appropriate. So you can control everything from your side. How? How can now I create a Padlet and I share it with my students? I like what I did with you now. Pay attention because you're going to do the same after a few minutes. So all what you need is just to go to padlet.com and to sign up. As I, uh, uh, Marwa and uh, Anand has just encouraged you to do. And once you go inside the, the website itself, you go to select. And when you click select, it moves you to another icon, which is make a Padlet. Once you click it, it generates a template Padlet for you automatically with no uh, difficulty. So all what you just sign up will and then create a Padlet and it creates itself automatically. In the top right corner or, or at the top right corner here, you have three icons, the three dots, the gear and the share icon. These icons, icons helps you to, or help you to control the Padlet and it changes the title, uh, the wallpaper of it, and also gives you the options how to share it with your students. It gives you, for example, uh, a code to scan it. If you want to ask students to scan it, they were going to access the Padlet, or to copy the link of the Padlet, or to email it, to share it via Facebook or Twitter, or even to copy and paste it from the, the address bar here. You can copy and paste it as what I did now. I copied and pasted it in the chat box from here. Easy. Once you share it with them via, for example, Zoom, via WhatsApp group, via the messenger, via the email, via sharing the, the code to scan, whatever, any means they are good, you are going to use, it will be easy for them just to access it in no time. So let's move on. By the way, once you uh, are inside the path itself, you can create the task here by clicking, as I mentioned, the plus icon that appears in the, at the bottom right corner or double click any empty space in front of you. It generates a text box like this. As you can see at the bottom of it, you can see some icons. From here, you can upload any kind of file that you want to share with your students. It's not just for writing or typing a text. If you can upload, for example, videos, images, links, or even files from your computer. So like this, for example, this is the option that you're going to have. And the even also to upload anything from your computer. Easy. So good, so far so good. Good. Excellent. So for those who already did, I want now, let's move on to the next stage. I want you to practice practically how to use this with your students. So this, here's a task for you. For those who joined us now, I want you to go type padlet.com in your browsers and then sign up if you didn't and make your first padlet. Once you make it, copy and paste, copy and paste 
the link for this Padlet and drop it in the chat box and we can access your Padlet and type some answers or share with you a task. So you can type a task for us and we can access it and, and give you the answer. We can do this together now as if we are teachers and students for each other. Easy? I'll give you, for example, three, four minutes to do this. Give it a go. And let's see if you have a difficulty or a problem, drop it in the chat box. What should I copy? Okay, so for this, after you finish your Padlet, you can copy and paste this link because this is the link uh, that enables us to access your Padlet, to share with you the task, for example. If you're going to ask us, us a question, we can answer it via this link because we're going to click the link or copy and paste it to access your own Padlet, as, as what I did with you. Okay. So we have one here who did it. So we have Rami here, I think, or RA has already, and we have Radu as well created another one. That's great. Let's see one of your Padlets. Did you write a task in it? So we can answer it and interact with it. Abir also, great. Good, so I'm going to It's moving so fast here, so let's move on a little bit here. I've already clicked Radwa's uh, Padlet now. I'm going to share it with you, new share. And here we go. By the way, this is, uh, can you see my screen now? This is one of your Padlets, by the way. It's not clear yet. Uh, just to stop sharing the PowerPoint presentation. I have already created a new share. It's not appearing yet. Okay, so is it is it appear? Does it appear now? Not yet. Okay, so is it okay now? Yes. Perfect. So this is not my Padlet, this is one of your uh, Padlets. And what's your favorite restaurant and why? I always go where there with my friends, Chinese food, perfect, that's great. That's nice. We have a lot of things, what should I do after signing up? Iman, so for Iman, after you sign up Iman, you go to Wall, create a Padlet and you copy and paste the link as we, as your uh, police did now. In the same story, is it the same story with the Google app Padlet? Yeah, most of, by the way, we have, this is just a, a, a sample of a online platform that brainstorm ideas and most of them have the same features, but with different, uh, different options or more or less, something like this, but they have the same idea of sharing things, yes. Okay, that's great. So I think you got the idea now. So how to create a Padlet, is it easy for you? Of course, after the session, you're going to have uh, much time to practice and to apply this and you can create groups with your friends and to apply, practice it before using it with your uh, students if they're the first time to use it. Yes, if you want to share an exercise, as, as we did now, you copy uh, the link and you share it with your students whether you're going to share it via WhatsApp or Messenger or uh, email it or ask them or to, to scan the, the code with a QR code reader um, there, but don't know. Yes, I used it before. Great idea, idea for sharing it. Thank, that's great, thank you. Perfect. And of course, some of us are familiar with the tool and some others didn't try it before, but after the session, uh, the recording will be available on uh, the uh, YouTube channel of Relu Cairo uh, Mentors platform, and it will explain again from the very beginning the steps of how to create a Padlet and how to share it with your students. 
and you can track this again and it will help you. You can give it a go practice. And by the way, I'm going to share with you my contact details by the end of the session. So if you have a question or if you face a problem with it, you can ask me and I would be very happy to answer your question later, okay? If you struggle with a problem or have a problem with any one of these tools. Fine? That's great. Good. Let's move on. Word clouds. Have you ever used word clouds in your classes? No, no. Yes, good. Yes. So you're going to share with us good input today. No, perfect. So we have some say yes and some say no. Mostly, mostly no, no, no. That's great. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. What are word clouds? I want you, before we start or continue here, to look at what you can see in front of you now on the screen and tell me, what is our lesson about today? So I'm, I'm teach, your teacher now, and I want you to answer me. Look at the word cloud that you have in front of you now and tell me, what is our lesson today about? Yes, <laughs> yes. If you allow me, of course. If it's about traveling, yes. Visiting, airplane, travel, good. Vocabulary. Okay, it's about, yeah, that's right. But I, I mean the topic of the theme. What is the lesson about? Some mentioned about traveling. How do you know it's about traveling? From such words like holiday, good, yes. Okay, let's think about it in a different way. We have some small words and some other bigger words, right? What does this mean? What, are, what is the significance of having bigger words in this word cloud? Does it mean something important or something to you? Bigger ones are used more times, that's right. So the bigger words, are frequently used or repeated in the text. That's right. Maybe. Good. So I mean, subtitles mean main points or main ideas. That's right. Good. The same way, Wordle.net. That's right. Wordle.net. That's right. It's one of the generators of Wordle Clouds. Wordle.net. Writing words, scanning, writing words. Okay, let me ask you a question now. So what do you think of Titan here, this is the biggest word, right? So Titan here is the biggest word. What does, what does this mean? What do you think of Titan? What, what does this for? It's okay for Padlet to put, uh, a ship, a ship, a big one, a place. It's a place, okay. I guess they are key words. Yeah, that's right, these are the key words. And Titan is the main, the main key word. Okay, so Titan is the name of the place, that's right. So let's see. You are great. You, you hit the point, by the way. Titan and holiday. So it's something about Titan, which is relating to holiday, airport. That's right. This is the original text that I was supposed to teach to my students. And it was about Titan, which is a traveling agency providing services for travelers. So as you see, you could pick some main or uh, some of the main ideas of the text itself before you start presenting it to your students using just a word cloud with different size words and colors in an attraction way rather than also to display a picture or ask a question it was another way an engaging way a new way to make it more interesting to our students right that's right this is the kind of lead in okay now Word clouds, it's a kind of collection of words, as you have uh, just seen, uh, that you provide from a text, whether it is uh, for a uh, listening text or a reading one, and it gives prominence to the repeated words. And the more, uh, if the one is repeated more times or many times, it is going to have a bigger size to draw uh, the attention of our students to this point that this is something important in the text itself. And it carries in itself something or one of the main ideas. And it can be created with many digital tools, like WordArt, WordArt.com, or WordSeft. 
apcya.com, worldle.net that, that one of you mentioned in the text box a while ago, tuxedo, and pearleverywhere.com. And the last one specifically is a very interesting one because uh, it's an interactive word cloud generator. You can assign a task to your students and ask them to respond. And their responses was going to be uh, or to create a word cloud online immediately, like what we did with the Padlet, but it will be on the shape of word cloud. So let me show samples. This is a sample of a word cloud. This is another one. As you can see, there are hundreds of shapes. And from these options, you can create a shape which is a little bit relevant to the text or the lesson that you're going to teach your students. So you can choose, for example, a shape of uh, uh, a dollar if you are talking about money and business, a shape of a flight uh, or a plane or uh, a ship if you're talking about traveling or transportation or something like this. So it can be something that is relevant also indirectly or in an indirect way to the topic or the theme of the, of the lesson itself. Now, my question to you, how can word clouds be used in our classrooms? Which types uh, of lessons or uh, what activities that I can use a word cloud to uh, share with my students? Vocabulary lesson, that's right. Writing, reading lead in, that's right, good. Eliciting vocabulary, great, Nahla. Speaking activities. Teach, checking, checking, check the vocabulary. Good, checking the understanding of the new vocabulary. That's great. To summarize, as a warm up, that's good. Yes. Wow. I think you can get a lot of ideas uh, from your input here because, as I told you from the very beginning, it's a kind of sharing ideas. I use these uh, tools. Uh, from my own experience with my trainees, and you, I use them in some certain situations with some certain activities. And you can add more based on your, the context that you're working in and the different types of activities that you need to share with your students as well. So let's see. Let's see. These are some additional suggestions, and they are similar to what, yes, pre teach vocabulary. Good. Previewing texts. Again, we are talking about how to engage my students in a new way, in an interesting way. And I can share with the cloud with my students about before I start the listening uh, activities or the reading task to share with them or to activate their schemata, their background about the ideas of the topic itself of the, the listen so I can prepare them or make it as an interesting or engaging lead in to the listen. Using for writing stories, I can use a word cloud of some certain words that I want them to use to create their own personal stories. So there's another way. Reviewing vocabulary, as you mentioned, if this is from a previous lesson, and ask the display them and ask them about them to use them, for example, in sentences or to check the spelling, if I'm going to, to, to play a trick with them about the spelling. Whole class vocabulary assessment, one of you mentioned this. Varying vocabulary exercises as well. It's a matter of changing the way that you present the vocabulary or check understanding. Generating content for writing activities as well. So as you mentioned before, poll everywhere, poll everywhere .com, the last generated or the, the last generator of word clouds. You can uh, ask students to share with you uh, some adjectives or nouns or verbs that they can use in writing about a certain topic and you display this on the board and ask them to make use of them before uh, they start writing their paragraphs or letters. Identify challenging words prior to the lesson. And this is very important. Sometimes when you are teaching uh, a reading lesson or uh, a listening one, um, you can display the most difficult words in the text uh, in a word cloud and change their understanding. If they know these words, you can skip them in the presentation stage so you can save time. And they are, if they are struggling with uh, another one uh, or another difficult word, you can give it more focus or um, uh, give it more time during the presentation stage. So you can save time and make your effort focused and concentrating on the most blocking words, not every word in the lesson. This can be discovered by using a word cloud with your students at the very beginning of the lesson itself. 
how can I create a word cloud like the one that I have already shared with you? I'm going to share it with you via one, just one uh, word cloud generator here, which is word, wordart.com. You can use the same. It's the same system with most of others, but this is something that you can uh, apply on. So word, uh, wordart.com, and then you go to create now. This is directly with no, no, no extra steps, unless you need to sign up to save your work, but you can use it without signing up as well. Once you click uh, create, uh, create now, it moves you to this page. In the top or at the top uh, right, right, the top left corner here, you can find this icon which is import. When you click import this icon, it generates a box for you here. Here you can type the words or copy and paste the text that you want to generate a word cloud for. Once you finish, click import words. Are you following me? Because you're going to do the same now. Good. So wordart.com, create now, click import. Here, type the words or copy and paste from any website or any text that you have. And once you finish, click import words. Does anything happen here? No, because we need still an extra step. This is the red icon that you need to click in order to uh, uh, make the word cloud. You, when you click it, the word cloud will appear here. That's it. It's easy as it is. So after you say, uh, after you click import words, you click visualize. And then once you click it, it will appear in this space. One more point. If you want to change the shape, I don't like this shape. At the bottom left corner, you're going to have many icons like shape, fonts, layout, and style, which gives you many options and alternatives to, the, to change the shape and the color, the font, the style, everything. But once or each time you click any one of these options, you have to click visualize again because it won't be displayed here unless you click visualize. So choose the option and click visualize. That's it. Once you click the option again, because some of us forget this, click visualize to activate the feature and to apply it. Now, my task for you, type wordart.com and create now, then type some words or copy and paste any text from anywhere and make your first word cloud. By the way, you can take a screenshot uh, of your work and share it on other and uh, in Relook, uh, Cairo Mentors platform uh, page on the post, for example, if you want to share it with us. Please, if you did and if it worked with you, just drop a yes, I did uh, or finished or done in the chat box. And if you have a problem, please share it with us. Excellent summer. Apir is asking, what about the big size of some words? What do you mean with this? Uh, how do you do this? This is what you mean? OK, you cannot interfere with this. It generates itself by itself. So I mean, if you're going to put a text, it is going to be generated automatically. Unless if you want to make some words bigger than the others, you can control this by copying and pasting these words of these words in the text box before you generate it. For example, if I'm going to, uh, I want to give more pronouns to a word like, for example, uh, traveling. So uh, I, the text is about traveling, but the traveling is not in a big size. It's like, for example, 15 or 14 uh, in size. I can copy and paste the same word many times. And when I click visualize, you're going to notice the difference on the size of it. So you can control this if you want to make it bigger than usual or than the others. We have one here who could do uh, one of this. Let's share it with you. I'm going to click here and share it with you. New share. Share it with you. Where is that? Oh, it's the Facebook page. I send them the link to 
to be able to make a screenshot and post it here, there. Okay. <laughs> yes. okay. I have done. Can I share my screen? I think it's better to make a screenshot and go to the post. What what do you think? Yeah. Let's let's do it as a screenshot and share it in the post uh, on the Facebook page so we can see it later. So it's okay. Yeah, I send you a link to make a screenshot and post it there, and then we are we will be able to see it now. And by the way, you can share the link of the the word the art itself. So yes. like one of these friends, yeah, yeah, one of this, yeah, I, I can see here one of them has already done this. Perfect. So I can share this with you. This is one of your colleagues, uh, Word the Clouds. You share. Can you see my uh, my screen now? Yes, it's clear. Yeah, this is one of your friends, uh, Word the Clouds. And as you can see, it gives you some kind of, uh, of trick animation. This happens when you, you do this or you, you move your cursors over them. So again, you can ask or discuss these words with your students also as well. Thank you very much for sharing this. The Shipa. <laughs> I can paste the screenshot on Facebook comments. You can upload it uh, in a comment. You can upload it. You can upload it in a comment. It's okay. I mean, it's just a sample. Uh, I mean, you know now the steps and you know how to use it. So it's a matter of just to be sure that you are, most of you are familiar with the steps, how to create a Padlet, how to share it with your students, how to use it. So here we can, we don't have so much time to, ma to have uh, detailed practice or intense practice for this, but you get the idea. Hi, Hassan. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> How are you, Sam? So it's a pleasure to see you. Okay, good. So let's get back to our presentation. Kahoot. <laughs> I think most of you are familiar with Kahoot, right? But I think I may have something new about using it in our classes. OK, before I start, how do you use Kahoot in your classes? For what? Yes, I know. Kahoot is very famous. But I tried to think about how to use it or make it more engaging in different ways, in, uh, in a pedagogy pedagogical way with my students. Games, that's right. Challenge. I know most of us are thinking about it in such a way, in this way only. That's right. Multitasks. We create quizzes. What I don't, I don't do. I don't do. What does it mean? What, what, what does it mean? What, what, what does it mean? Test. Puzzles. You don't use Kahoot. Perfect. So this is a good chance for you to experience it with us. It's, it's one of the digital tools that you're going to, to practice using it now, after a minute, with me. Change vocabulary, good, great. So let's see. I want you, all of you now, please, I want to, to, uh, to type kahoot.it on your devices, please. All of you, just type kahoot.it. And this is what you're going to see in front of you on your screens. Kahoot.at.at. I'm going to, to go through this uh, step by step because I know that some of us are not familiar with Kahoot, so to make it easy for them. So just type Kahoot.at in your browsers. Just uh, for Shayma, please done. Okay, just go to your browser, whether it is Chrome or Safari or 
uh, Internet Explorer, any, any, any browser that you're using, just type in the address bar kahoot.at, then enter. So this is why we're going to know it now. So don't worry. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about this. OK, once you click code at, this is what you're going to see, ladies and gentlemen. He will ask you to enter a PIN code for the game here. And this is what I'm going to share with you after a while. So don't be in a hurry. Once you enter the code, you click uh, enter, and then you write your name. And because we have some other colleagues from different parts of the world now, I want you to type your first name and your country. So for example, Muhammad, Egypt, uh, Tom, for example, England, uh, Sarah from India, whatever, okay? And for the rules of this game, this is what you are going to have on the screen. In front of you, with me now, you're going to find this, for example, a question with four, four options here. But what will appear on your screens is this. On your device, it will be this. All what you need just to check the question and then the answer. For example, what is the capital of Bahrain? It's Manama. So you're going to click the square which has the same shape and color on your screen. For example, this is the blue one. You're going to click it. That's it. Easy? Take care that it's different from what you're going to see on my screen and your device. This is your device, and this is your, my screen here. The winner is going to be the fastest, or the one who is going to answer the fastest. The fastest, and of course, the correct answer. Choose the correct answer. And by the way, the three winners are going to receive my presentation and uh, a list of extra suggested uh, uh, digital tools categorized in per, per scale. Means some for writing, some for speaking, some for generating uh, interactive posters, some for uh, animations, a lot of things. So this will be directly after we finish, they can contact me and I will email directly the presentation and the list for them as a gift. Ready? I, I haven't shared it yet. I'm just giving you, uh, by the way, I haven't shared anything with you. I'm just explaining the instructions. We haven't started yet. Okay, let's see now. The code will appear now. For those who didn't uh, get it from the beginning, just go to Kahoot.at. Kahoot.at. And ask it for the code. Now I think you can see it now. Can you see the pink code on the, on, on the screen now? Thank you. 
Yes, I'm just waiting to, uh, to invite most of you to share with us, to speak with us, so I'm going to start. Just wait, please. The ones who have already entered their names, just wait, please. I'm waiting for our police to join us. choose uh, Cairo, but some of us choose Tokyo and for Riyadh. Is Riyadh is the, is the, is the, is the capital of, uh, of uh, Egypt? What is, what, what, what is this uh, Riyadh? What, is the, what, what country does uh, have a, Riyadh as a capital city? Saudi Arabia, that's right, Saudi Arabia. So it's not, it's not the capital of Egypt because it's the capital of Saudi Arabia, okay? By the way, I'm doing with you now, I'm trying to practice with you now what I'm doing with my students. That question didn't appear. It might be because of the internet connection that you have. So just keep with us and let's see the following question. We have still four other questions, okay? The code, you can find it here. I'm going to come in code for you now, just a minute. The code is here. Here's the code, okay? For the one who asked for the code. Let's move on. So in Costa Rica. Wow, we have, we have a, a very good one here. So we have Hisham Rifai. Okay, Sen, please keep uh, at the top because they are going to challenge you in the late uh, in uh, the other questions. So this is the first till now. Are they going to allow you to keep on the top? <laughs> Scott Thurnberry. By the way, Jeremy Harmer, James Cravener, Stephen Krashen, and Scott Thurnberry are the pioneers of the ELT world. And the, this picture was for Scott Thurnberry, and I was lucky to meet him in Bahrain and to have uh, some sort of chat with him about his theory about teaching using uh, the approach of dogma. And he is really a fantastic uh, man and a funny person as well. So this was uh, Scott Thurnberry. You can go in his name and find a lot of his um, products and writing and books and references. He's a very good one to learn from. So who is the first now? Oh, Amir. So we have a, a new one on the top now. And I think we have different ones. Sen, you are here now the fourth, the fifth. Again, we have still another chance to change the rules now or the, the rank. Let's move on. How many children does I have? Do I have? Sorry, do I have? Yeah. How many children do I have? I won't count, by the way. Wow. I got most of you answered too. <laughs> I have three. I have Mona, I have you, 
Yusuf and I have Hamza. We are the apple of my eye. Okay. Hannah, okay, or Han, Han is the first now. Okay, perfect. <laughs> this is a puzzle now. How do you make the number one disappear? <laughs> That's right. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So add G, so it will be gone, it will disappear. That's right. So who's the first now? Hanid is still on the top, and Amir now the second, Khalid. Now the last question that will determine the first three uh, uh, winners of our competition now or our uh, game. With more technology and education, there will be no need for teachers agree, disagree or no no so the most of you would say disagree okay you disagree with this okay perfect my question to you now before I declare the three winners why do you agree or and why do you disagree in the chat box please just get, share your ideas with us the one who said I disagree why do you disagree and the one who said, I agree, why you agree? I know that nothing can replace the teachers. Okay, yes, teacher is a tool, technology is a tool. Excellent. We hope so. Let's say Marwa, which is the real guidance. Human needs human. technology there's no one who can guide teacher is the one who can guide that's right the teacher is a facilitator who will use the tech excellent we can't ask technology to understand something. And the one who agreed with this, well, I, I want the, the, the opinion of the other three who, disagree, or, who, uh, who agree with, the, with this statement. The guidance learns to hold. By the way, there's no one perfect answer, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, the ones who uh, mentioned that they agree or disagree, both of you are right, because each one has an, a point of view and he has his own justification. I disagree because that's the teacher who decides when and how to use the appropriate tool. I like this point. Thank you very much. Okay, for me, none for teachers. <laughs> yes, for it, Hassan, that's right, none for teachers. For me, I also, and again, this is my personal point of view, I disagree. Because we are, as you mentioned, we are human and we need the sort of human communication, human interaction. And teacher is the one who can understand the feeling and can read the faces rather than also anything just, that just or the behaviors which cannot be read or understood by uh, the computer or technology. And as you mentioned, you are a facilitator. I mean, technology um, in itself is not uh, a goal or an aim to achieve. It's, a, it's just a tool or a means that helps you to achieve a goal. And your role is to uh, adjust it or uh, make the best of it in order to provide your learners with the best experience that meets their needs and is convenient to their 
uh, learning style and their um, capabilities and their hopes and what they want to achieve from uh, from the learning experience itself. So yeah, I agree with you. Now let's move to the glorious moment. Who are the winners of our competition now? again is my presentation clear or visible to you now perfect okay so the usual question how can Kahoot or what do you think oh by the way before we start how do you think of the game this game do you like it or not why why not Amazing, good, engaging. It's really ch challenging, really amazing. I want you to focus about what was my role during uh, uh, the game itself. What what, what was I uh, I do? I, uh, uh, what did I do during this, the activity itself with you? Because I was like a teacher, right? I love the spirit of competition. Not only this, monitoring, just fun. It's not always useful with young learners. I agree to some extent. It's not always just for with young learners. Maybe we can talk about this. It's it's it can be adjusted. Instructions, engaging, challenging, director, facilitating, having fun, learning. I think works with it works with all ages. Checking, informative, understanding. Yeah, that's right. Checking, understanding, giving correction, discussion. And were you engaged during this activity? You, are, you were like learners, right? And I was correcting your mistakes. Okay. By the way, for general knowledge, I, I chose the, this because you can just adjust the question according to the syllabus or the, the lesson or the, the activity that you are teaching in the class. I, I just made this because we are having fun and we are teachers, <laughs> so just, just general knowledge for us. Marvelous activity. Great. And how can I use Kahoot now in my classroom? Away from just it's a tool for competition only or uh, creating quizzes only, how can I think beyond this to create or to exploit it to the top or to the maximum of it? to make my students more engaged and to explore this kind of engagement to teach them something. As a warm up, reading comprehension, maybe. I did it once before, really. I asked them to read the text and to answer the, the questions on Kahoot as a kind of a changement, yes. Lead in, test prior knowledge and elicit new information. I like this, Ashrakat. Get to the student interested. Wormer, great. Preliminary, preliminary, preliminary activity. Lead in, good. Great. I think now you have a lot of ideas engaging students in competition, quizzes, for anything. Yes, that's right. So let me share what I have and then think about it. Testing what learners know, as you mentioned in an engaging and interesting, attractive way. Checking understanding, as you mentioned as well. And by the way, 
for chain understanding now, is it only via uh, my questions that I display here? Can I change this way and engage my students more uh, with the Kahoot game itself and do it in a different way? I'll tell you my experience. I asked my students to create their own Kahoots and to challenge each other. I mean, after explaining a lesson or presenting a new target language for them, I asked them to, uh, to work in groups and create a Kahoot game, applying what they understood from uh, the lesson itself to challenge the others. And to, for example, to, uh, to create three or four or five questions based on the rule or the new vocabulary or whatever. And then the, they leave the role instead of me and to change the other. For example, I have four or five groups in my class and each group is going to change the others. And the best score of the one who is going to, get, to collect the best score at the end is going to be the winner. And here's one of the samples that students uh, used before. Yazid and Raja and Mulham is likes eat water. This was about using present simple and uh, they use uh, some sentences with incorrect uh, structure and give them some alternatives and they choose the correct answer. And as you can see here, some of them choose the right answer and most of them choose the wrong one. And here, I just ask each one of them or each group to discuss its point of view and they are engaged because they are challenging each other and they are involved, they are interested in proving that they are right and they want to convince the others with their point of view, applying and reflecting on what they have already learned. And the winner, of course, is going to be the one who's going to write it or choose it correctly or right. And here again, sometimes I ask them to, uh, to challenge each other in a different way. If the question itself is not formed correctly, the group who created this Kahoot is going to lose the mark. So again, I'm creating them or activating them or encouraging them to be, uh, to peer correct each other and to think carefully in an engaging way because they are, they want to, to be the winner, then they are challenging each other. They want to know any kind of mistake. They are very focused, attentive, and paying attention to every single sentence and word. And this is my point. I want them focused and engaged to learn. And also, this could prevent them from using some funnels sometimes and to include some, uh, create, some creative questions. For example, this is their, their own uh, production where you can, it's supposed to be can you, play Kahootoo. They give it a, a nickname with friends and well, they, this uh, were their options in the classroom with Mr. Muhammadi. This was one of my colleagues, who, his name was uh, Akhil. Yes, I remember him. <laughs> So this is one of the ways to check uh, their understanding in a new way using Kahoot. Ask them to create their own Kahoot. Also in controlled practice, as you can see, I remember I was supposed to be observed by the quality assurance manager in my institution, and I was nominated to be the, the teacher who's going to be observed. And unluckily, uh, I had a boring activity I, I, I confess, really, it was a very tough, boring activity in the class during this session. And when I looked at it, I, I, think, I said that I'm going to lose, I lose my students' focus uh, during this uh, observed lesson. I tried to think about how to get out of this problem, and I thought about adjusting the activity and turning it into a game uh, on Kahoot, and grading the difficulty of the, the task a little bit to make it appropriate, and it worked in a marvelous way. And really, really, the students were engaged. I was satisfied. And the observer was, inter <laughs> was really interested in the lesson. I liked it very much. So again, I can use um, the Kahoot itself as um, a stage of my lesson. It's not just lead-in or checking understanding. I can use it to apply one of the activities in my class to adjust it in an engaging way if it's boring or challenging. Uh, can I see what you are writing here? Good idea for the one who asks for feedback. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Also, I can use it as an assessment tool. As you mentioned, again, and instead of just giving them a regular or traditional worksheet or using one of the online digital tools to create online quizzes as well, I can create the quiz itself on Kahoot and give it another go with them as a game rather than as a kind of testing, but in a funny way. 
highlighting comments saying, this is for you as teachers, this feature which I like most about it, I can discover the common mistakes that my students frequently uh, make and I give it more focus in my lesson planning and uh, the following uh, lessons. Like, if you go to, for example, on your page, you're going to find kind of an icon called My Results. When you click it, it moves you here, and you click the game, for example, any game that you like, you're going to all the games here, and you click Download, Download here, and it moves you to an Excel sheet or we, with the Excel sheet you have here, some tabs here, you have question summary. When you click it, it gives you all the questions and it gives you an analytical report about the scores and the mistakes of your students. So for example, I have a question here uh, with, a pro, with, a, with, a, with question eight, it has a big uh, problem. Most of them answer it wrong. So I can keep this in my mind and focus on it later on my listen. Again, this is just an analytical tool for you a uh, good feature for you to make use of to know or to highlight the common mistakes of uh, your students. Did you think of before to use Kahoot as uh, a kind of achievement or a new tool to give homework to your students? Have you thought about this before? Or do you know how to do this? Yes or no? No? Perfect. You know that giving homework or assigning homework to them is something tough, something boring, something that they won't like at all. It was slow for me. Yeah, it's okay. Perfect. So this is something new, as I told you. I thought about, I explored the features of Kahoot as well, and they thought it can work uh, in a good way uh, to assign homework to them. So here, for example, one of the options that you have here is challenge. When you go to the game that you have already played with them, you go to challenge. When you click challenge, it gives you the option to assign this game as, an, as a homework or as an assignment to your students. And you can assign the date and the, the time for them as well. But you need an extra step here. Before you do this, you have to create an account on Google Classroom or Remind. These are two interactive uh, platforms that you can create virtual classrooms on and you can enroll your students uh, on these platforms. And then once you create a group there, you can assign homework or a game as a home, as homework or as an assignment from Kahoot on one of these two platforms. I did this many times and it worked really in a nice way and my students were engaged in doing homework there. So this is an idea. But how, how can I create a Kahoot game for those who haven't uh, tried this? All what you need, just go to, go to Kahoot com and take care here the platform for you as a teacher is kahoot.com the platform for students as players is kahoot.it kahoot.it once you go to kahoot.com it will be the same process with any platform any uh, online website you can sign up once you sign up you follow some certain steps like you choose i want as a teacher and then you go to My Cahoots, and then New. New here means you're going to create a Kahoot game, okay? By the way, it's not this difficult. It's just a few steps, and you can try everything by trial and error, and you will find everything on your own. I explored all of these tools and others on my own. I didn't ask for help. And if I'm stuck with something, I just go get it on YouTube, how to do blah. You will find a lot of videos explaining how to do things on different digital tools. So this is my secret, okay? You can keep it for yourself and you can apply it. And then you move to quiz and then you create it and then you click play. Once you click play, that's it. You are going to move to the pin code uh, tab that you're going to share it with your students to start your game. That's it. There are, there's also one good feature about this. It's about share. Sometimes when you are working with a, a group of teachers in your, uh, in your school or your institution or your college, you can divide the syllabus or the units of the, 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 the book that you are teaching into different parts and each teacher is going to be responsible for creating Kahoot games for a unit or a section of the book. And you can, each one can share the, his, his work with the others so you can save time, effort and enjoy and your students are going to be more engaged and interested and having fun all the time with all 
uh, units or the only units of the book. So this also can be a good feature for you. Now, it's time for a poll. I'm going to share with you a poll now, and they want you to share with me your real opinion and your personal uh, reflection on what you have already experienced with me or got from this session. And waiting for your responses. Does it appear to you? Yes. That's a great. Waiting you guys. We have 23 out of 44. We are we're still waiting for about maybe 20, 20, yeah, 20 participants, attendees. Come on, dears. So this means that you didn't like it. You are not interested in it. It's nonsense. By the way, I like this as well. So don't worry about this. Don't worry. Click on the poll itself. Don't try it in the chat box. Thank you. Yeah, do not write in the chat box, ladies and gentlemen, please just uh, to keep Click. a record of this in the poll itself. Yes. I did mine. <laughs> I do not have the option to vote. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Iman. Actually, uh, the poll is in uh, the upgraded accounts. It's not in the free Zoom accounts. No. Lucky you are, Anam. Yes. You are an important person, <laughs> I did it for you all, Wallahi. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, that's okay. great. Let's share results. Share results, okay. Does it appear to you? Yes. I can't see it. You can't? No. It appears. Does it appear to you, the results, guys? Okay, the, the most important for them, not for me. It's okay. I've already seen it. That's okay, no problem. It's great. So thank you very much. I, I'm I'm really into, very pleased that you found you have found something new. As I told you, most of you have, are familiar with these tools, but I think because I I, um, I try to use these tools on my own uh, way uh, with my own students, keeping in mind their context that I'm working in, their needs, and understanding their mentality. This, this led me to think about using these tools in a different way. And I'm sure that you can create a more uh, interactive and interesting activities using these tools on your own, with your mind, because creativity has no limits, really. And I will be so happy if you share some new ideas with me later so I can make use of them as well in my classes. Yeah, sure. Well... Right. Here's the good part as well. Because we didn't have much time. Oh, wow, we, we spent one hour and 20 minutes. Wow. Yes. Time is running so fast. <laughs> I'm so sorry if it was too long for you. And I'm going to finish in five minutes, okay? These are some extra suggested digital tools for you. Uh, I categorize them according to their use. For example, you can find some digital tools for you making quizzes, some others. Uh, for making collaboration discussions like Padlet, Flipgrid. And Flipgrid is a very interesting one, especially for speaking activities. You can make use of it. Also, you can use uh, learning management systems like Blackboard, Odmodo, Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, Scology, and Odmodo as well. I used Odmodo specifically with my students, especially when I was teaching writing and they were, they hate writing. They really hated writing. And because of this, I tried, to, and before this, we didn't use uh, iPads. They used just their smartphones. I changed writing from writing to typing. So I assigned the task on Odmodo, and I asked them to type it using their smartphones, and I give them feedback online, and they liked it most. If I, had if I have some time, <laughs> I can share with you this way later, because I, I did another presentation about Odmodo and how to change the way you use it in your class using Odmodo, and it's really an interesting platform. I recommend it to you. Also, we have a 
many tools for uh, surveys and mind mapping presentation as well. Flashcard creator, interactive posters, many and many, many things. This will be shared with you later uh, by Anan. And for the winners of Kahoot Game, I'm going to share them personally with, uh, with them when they contact me. So don't worry about this. Also animation, screening, ah, a lot, a lot. And you can find more than this. But take care. The most important is what is coming now, ladies and gentlemen. Let me ask you a question now. We have hundreds of tools. We have so many countless endless number of tools. Is it what or why? What tool should I use or why should I use it? This is my question to you. This is very important to keep in mind. Yes, I know both are, right, both are important, but which is more important to keep in mind? Why, why? <laughs> so my question to you is, why, why? You mentioned why, but why you choose why? Yes, yeah, someone here mentioned the purpose, yes. Excellent, that's right. The purpose and the needs, the objective, understand the choice. Both, I agree with you, both are important. What is appropriate tool? And why should I use it for the objective? Excellent. So we agree on this point. Yes, the, the, the tool itself and how to choose it carefully is very important. But I have to keep in mind why I'm planning my lesson. Why should I use it in my class? This will help me to work or to uh, embed it or to exploit you, uh, this tool effectively in my class. Where should I uh, allocate it in my lesson plan? What is it for? Is it just for fun and having this crazy screams, uh, <laughs> screaming in my class and shouts and having smiles and fun. Yes, you will have this, I'm sure, for that, of that. But I'm, I'm talking about something else. From the pedagogy si uh, aspect or from the, uh, for the benefit of my students or learners themselves, does this help them to be engaged and to learn something from my lesson? Does this help me to achieve the purpose or the aim or the goal of my lesson or the, or the stage of this uh, uh, stage or procedure of my lesson plan or not. This is very important to keep in mind because this will help you to focus on planning how to use it. Otherwise, you're going to lose that control, <laughs> lose control and it won't be okay. And you can uh, have uh, it in a bad way or it, it will be not effective in your class. The second point is instructions. Did you notice what I did with you? Uh, especially in the very beginning, before we saw the Padlet. Uh, I assume that some of you are not familiar with, uh, with the Padlet itself. So what were the instructions uh, that I gave while the Padlet or, for example, the Kahoot game, for example? What did I, I use? I used what? Do you remember? I used the code. That's right. Great. Informative. Thank you. I move for the instruction. Where are the instructions? Were the instructions difficult or long? Did I support my instructions with some visuals to you to guide you? Did I go through my instructions in stages? Especially, for example, for Kahoot, I asked you to go to kahoot.at. And I know that some of you, uh, like one of our colleagues, she said that I, she didn't know uh, this uh, or didn't use this tool before. So I gave you exactly what you're going to expect from the tool itself. Were this or was this important before you start the task with your students? Perfect. So again, we are designing to use one of the digital tools. Be careful or plan your instructions carefully and Try to make it simple and to make it uh, supported with visuals. Sometimes if your students are not familiar with using this tool before, you can give them an example, like what I did with code. I told you that you're going to have what is the capital of Bahrain. These are the answers you can choose by clicking this icon. So giving an example also of what they are expected to do can explain everything and make it easier for you. Otherwise, you're going to, uh, it, it will cause chaos in your class. It will not want to be organize or it won't work effectively. This is very important as well. One more point. 
Demoing, as I mentioned, is giving an example. If you are starting uh, a new tool or using a new tool with your students, give them an example of how to use it first. And the last and the most important is reflection. Ask your students for uh, their opinion about the, the experience with the tool. What did they like and what, they, uh, what didn't they like? Keep this in your mind because while you are planning your uh, lesson plan or using this tool for another time, you can improve your performance using it with your students based on their opinion. We are working for them and we're trying to enjoy, make them engage it and to make them get the most, uh, most attractive and interesting uh, experience, learning experience in the class. And also reflection here is can be for you. You can reflect on your own performance. It worked this time because of blah, 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 but it didn't work in this question. Why and why not? How can I improve this? So reflection from your side and from the side of your learners as well. This is very important. Questions and answers. I think I'm uh, almost there. We're about, we're about to finish now. And sorry, so sorry. It's one hour and a half now. I'm so sorry to keep you for this long time. I'm so sorry. I forgot myself. Much appreciated. <laughs> Is Thank you so much, it's... Mr. Mohammed. Do you have any questions, dears? Okay, sorry. just make sure that you ha you are all uh, filled in the uh, Google form to send you all the materials, inshallah, after the session and recorded the, the recorded uh, session, inshallah, on YouTube. Uh, and we want to thank uh, thank Dr. Mr. Mohammed uh, so much for his fruitful session. Actually, it was an amazing one, fruitful uh, and very informative and on point. Uh, thank, you. thank you for your time. Uh, and we want to announce tomorrow's session. Inshallah, don't forget it. It's about teaching literature uh, in ESL classrooms uh, with Mr. Muhammad, uh, Mr. Ahmed Ali. Okay, don't miss it at 10 p.m. Inshallah, waiting you all. Thank you so much, Mr. Muhammad. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye -bye. Joy, see you. Take care. See you. Bye-bye.